So, Brian, we are joined by the current reigning and defending Chaotic Wrestling New England champion. Boy, do I know it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're in that long lineage as well. Well, I, I challenged for it. Uh, yes. But, you know, my heart wasn't really in it. I've already, you know, I mean, I've been to the top of the mountain. Why am I going to go half up? I understand that. <laughs> I've heard that before. Uh, so we are joined by Josh Briggs. Hello, sir. Hi, Josh Briggs. I don't like anyone. That's me. Yeah, it's a t-shirt. <laughs> we just talked about that. Chances are I don't like you. How'd that come about, the t-shirt um, idea? I just wanted a t-shirt, and someone gave me a live microphone and told me to cut a promo for a squash match or something of the sort. And that was my last line. Gave the microphone back, and mid-match, I was like, wow, that's a really cool line. And then <laughs> squashed the guy, and such is history. Yes. It's fun being, like, a big wrestler, isn't it? Like, I mean, big, like, in stature, because you don't do a lot of, like, the job stuff. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. I've, I, I think my, my quickest match that I ever lost was, like, 10 minutes, maybe. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, you, don't, you don't have to bump around a lot. You don't have guys tossing you around, and it's just... We're the ones doing the tossing. So, so how, how tall are you, sir? Uh, real life? Well, let's uh, let's keep fade the people here. Let's keep it. Uh, okay, uh, six eight. Six eight. Six eight. Good God! <laughs> You're barely six three. What are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all boots. It's all boots. Boy, if he's six, if he's six eight, I gotta be like six five. This is great news. <laughs> <laughs> I might have a shot with WWE, Mike. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well. 15 years ago in the 6'5", 240 era that I came up in. <laughs> Man, I missed the mark. I would have been signed. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, would have. Yeah. You're one of the only ones in the area. Yeah. <laughs> so I started doing my research on Josh Briggs, Brian, and I came about a few different Josh Briggs. There's Josh Briggs from Grafton, Massachusetts, who's a musician. Yeah, he sucks. He sucks? <laughs> yeah. You hear that, Josh Briggs from Grafton? You suck. <laughs> and then there's another Josh Briggs from Colorado, who in 2012 got six years in jail for breaking into someone's house and beating them with a metal pipe. What year was that? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> 2012. So he might, he's, he could be on an early behavior. <laughs> Good behavior. Might be me. I do have a beard. <laughs> spending any time in Colorado? No? no, no, not quite. Okay. So, no, you are not those Josh Briggs. You are your own Josh Briggs. Yes. And you were, what, you went to UMass, is that correct? UMass Amherst. Oh. Yeah, that's where I went. That's where oh. I went. UMass. Uh, Couple of Minutemen here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Antonio's yeah. Pizza is at the place, right? Is that Antonio's. The, oh, yeah. the best. That's where it's at. Another alum, like uh, Max Bauer, also. There's a good lineage. Oh, I didn't know Max was there. from UMass. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. How about that? All typical indie garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so you played a little football. We, you mentioned right before we had him on that you played a little football, didn't you? Yes, I did. Um, For the was, UMass Minutemen? The UMass Minutemen. We were dreadful. <laughs> uh, Always are. <laughs> I was actually, I wasn't terrible. I wasn't terrible. And one year our team was actually pretty good. But Division one, right? Division one A, top of the mountain. My junior year, I think we had the third or fourth best offense in the country and the fifth best quarterback in the country, but we had the second worst defense in the country. So we'd play a pro-style offense, slow, running the ball, and uh, we'd put up 42 points, and uh, we'd lose by, like, 47. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the math works out there. What was the math major at UMass? What, what conference are, the, are they in? Um, they were in the MAC. Now they're independent. Oh. Yeah, when I played, they were in the MAC, and we were uh, actually pretty good for the MAC. But um, just Crockett has no idea what we're talking yeah, about. Right right now. Now. Is that Marshall? Was Marshall in the MAC? At one uh, point? They might have been, but um, I think they moved to the Sun Belt, possibly. So weird, all the conferences. Yeah, it's I, I think that made the most sense with college football is when they're talking about making like the four or five like super conferences. Like I thought that would have been perfect. Yep. What? Uh, what? role did you play what po position position position, position mike um, i was starting right guard and then once our uh, starting center got hurt i took over the center position and that was where i made my uh my stake for the team M michael's played left out his whole career man <laughs> huh? what a good position <laughs> I like that uh so was that the original dream the nfl uh, it wasn't a dream when i was a kid i knew that i wanted to get an education and um, I knew that my family wouldn't be able to afford it. So I figured the only way to get an education was to be good at sports. I was always really big. And um, my first real dream, aside from wrestling, was a professional basketball player. And then 
I think my sophomore year in high school, I realized that I was only going to be the size of average point guards in the NBA. <laughs> so um, I kind of threw that one down the toilet and hopped over to football and found out that I was pretty decent at football. Without, without the ball handling skills, right? <laughs> so bad. So bad. <laughs> so was wrestling the original dream then? Yeah. When I was a child, okay. I loved wrestling. I remember looking myself in the mirror while like. I was just in my house and I'd try and cut little promos that I saw on Raw or Nitro and whatnot. And uh, wrestling was always what I wanted to do. I'm from Arizona originally. Okay. And Arizona is not a hotbed for pro wrestling, believe it or not. I didn't know one person who liked wrestling growing up. I had no clue how to do it. So that just flew out the window and I just decided I'd be a pro wrestling fan my entire life. <laughs> So he, he said Nitro, but then he said he didn't know any pro wrestling fan. So I can't figure out what era of wrestling that you fell in love like, with. I, right, on the tail, right on the tail end of Nitro, Ooh. my first memory was Jericho's list of 101 holds. Okay. I remember just loving that, and I fell in love with Jericho. And then after he moved to the WWE, I kind of... Uh, just kiboshed all of WCW from then on. <laughs> Most did. Yeah, I was to say, as <laughs> you, you and millions of other people. <laughs> so did you come here for football from Arizona? Yes. Um, I played high school football. I was really good. I had a bunch of scholarships. I took my one official visit to UMass and fell in love with everything about Massachusetts. Uh, signed during my official visit and moved out here. And the rest is what I've been doing now. History is what they say. Yeah. yeah. So was there an injury? What happened? Were you, were you just done with football after college? Um, so I have – it's a stupid injury. It's my finger. I tore oh. all the ligaments and tendons in it so that it was dead. Um, I could just feel, like, the nerves. My doctor wouldn't let me play. This was my junior year when we were really good. I had two games left, and I had a great season, and if I would have probably played the rest of that season, I would have maybe gotten a free agency deal or something of the sort. Uh, so I ended up hurting that that finger, and it kept me out for the last two games. Uh, I got treated like absolute garbage and um, was pretty much told on a daily basis it was my fault that I'm hurt, and I deserve to be hurt, and they should pull my scholarship, and things of that nature – to the point where I realized that football is the worst thing that could ever happen to me. And I felt bad. Um, it was it was really sad times because of how much I gave to that school and uh, how much I really cared. The UMass sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, that's like the, the epitome of like the of college sports, though. You Under the guise of like these kids get a free education, but that's totally not what it's about. The goal of the program isn't to graduate – these kids and they chew you up spit you out of and if you can't go anymore that's exactly what they do they treat you like garbage and yank scholarships and yeah. the ncaa college system division one you know is is awful it's, it's awful. So, bad. so bad so yeah I, I dealt with that injury and i realized that i hated football i wanted to do something else so um i realized i think my sophomore year maybe my freshman year here that massachusetts is it's very popular for wrestling. Everyone likes wrestling. I went to a store and I uh, had a wrestling shirt on and I got a bunch of compliments. So that was nice. And um, I started researching while I was in football how to become a wrestler, where to go, blah, blah, blah. I found Mike Hollow that way. And uh, after my senior year of football, I uh, chose to forego any opportunities with the NFL. Trained with Mike Hollow and uh, fell in love with wrestling. It's kind of funny because that's your original trainer, Brian. It is. Mike Hollow. Yes. Because he was like he was like doing stuff independently, like one on one at that Hollow time. Hollow right? Stables. He was running out the the Bell Time Club. Okay. And um down in Wakefield, Mass. And, My hometown. <laughs> that so, is. So I um I met him there and uh, it was really fun. How long were you with Mike? Six months and then um we kind of like mutually agreed that I got everything that I could out of him. I was training with him three days a week and then with uh, Bo Douglas as well, another two to three days a week. So I was training five, six days a week. After those six months, we kind of sat down, reevaluated where, where I was at, and we agreed that there wasn't much left for me to get from him because he's a phenomenal foundation footwork, um, like all that beginner stuff he's one of the best at. 
and I soaked it up like a sponge. So he suggested that I ship up here and uh, to New England Pro Wrestling Academy. So yeah, and I mean, you always say that Brian that he's a tremendous guy for yeah. basics. Yeah, yeah, Mike is. I mean, and you, and you know because you have the same training. They're tattooed on your brain. Like you'll be a seventy-five-year-old man someday, and and you'll know how to properly take a back bump and and proper footwork to get up to feed for for something. <laughs> and it's just that's what that's what Mike is good at. Mike is really it's he's one of those guys who, unfortunately, not not enough people know his name. He, he's probably an unsung hero of uh, of pro wrestling especially in this area when you think of the the list of guys that that he has trained he um, started with the killer kowalski school as the head trainer mm-hmm. there then came over to the chaotic school yeah i mean think like you know tomaso uh hansen kofi aaron stevens damian sandow to now i mean even down to josh i mean he, he's had such a profound impact on this area and 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 again you, you see mike's work every Monday and Tuesday nights on TV. So, pretty awesome. So, once you stepped here into the uh, New England Pro Wrestling Academy, what were your first impressions? Um, I really liked the class atmosphere. Um, yeah, because it was all one-on-one. One-on-one with, on one Mike. with Mike. Just all one-on-one. And um, How'd you like me just so he would slap the shit out of you? And I don't mean oh like chopping, but like you tie up and he slaps you and he puts <laughs> on an arm bar and he slaps you. I have, I have this tattoo right here. I have this tattoo on my left arm, and I leave every class with a handprint. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hand. You could see his goddamn. The arm bar ring. was the worst when he cinched in the fucking arm bar, <laughs> and there was nothing worse than in this building way back when it was the CTC. Uh, on a Sunday morning, there was like when it was freezing cold in here. You have no adrenaline. You have no adrenaline going, and he just it's like just stop slapping me, please, <laughs> please stop slapping me for the love of God. <laughs> So, of course, you're used to the team atmosphere, uh, college football. So yeah. when you walked in here, it was like a it was, whole it was refreshing. Feel. It was really it was really fun. Um, Robo Harpreet was the first guy I really bonded with. It, it was it was awesome. It was so refreshing to hang out with other people who shared that same passion for wrestling and um, to get a whole different um, learning tree and different uh, ideology about pro wrestling from Brian. It was awesome. Brian Fury. So what were your thoughts when you first met Brian Fury? Um, I don't know. Just an, a nice guy. He seemed like, nice he, wanted, guy. He, seemed like he wanted to teach me. <laughs> you probably saw that tall guy. He's uh, yeah. very nice to him. <laughs> well, Dijak's out of here soon. Here's my next meal ticket. <laughs> yeah, was Dijak here when you uh, um, first showed up? He, he wasn't here. He was... Um, um, he was with Ring of Honor at that time, but he'd pop in every once in a while. Which is so freaking weird because Dijak's been around for about five minutes, and you and Dijak's path here don't really cross. Yeah. And that's so biz- that, that's that's the epitome of wrestling in, in 2018 on how fast things can happen. Crazy. Like my second or third class here, he came in and Fury told him to have a match with me about 10 minutes, and uh, it was actually a pretty decent match. Uh, I'd already been working shows at the time for about three months. It was a good match, and uh, I learned so much from him at that point. Like that, that one ten-minute class match changed how I do everything now. It's, it's unreal. Really, like just the fact that you're working with another big guy because you're not really um that that as well. But um, to see like how he went about everything, how he put the match together. When I, when I would throw out ideas for the match, he would sh- he would change that idea and explain to me why he did that, and um, he'd give me these ideas and tell me why I should do that. Um, just a different way to get reactions from crowds as a big man wrestling another big man. It was just so eye opening and like game changing for me. So you talked about how you had already been wrestling on shows when you had that match at class with Dijak. Uh, how long from when you started? You said you were at six months with uh, Hollow. How long uh, until you had your first match? Uh, three months. Really? Three months in with Mike, you had your first match? Yep. Three months into training. So uh, where was that? Uh, UFO Wrestling for Pat Dillon. Oh, was I present for this match? You might have been. <laughs> well, you are you the UFO I think champion, you were. right? <laughs> oh, man. Was that 20-year reign? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think you were. I think you were present. It was... Um, I think I came like up to you. Haverhill or something? I, or like, it might have been for um for like the hospital benefit thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I remember coming up and talking to you about Mike Hollow, actually, and him training me and everything. Yeah, uh, three months in, and it was actually a decent match. Who Who is it against or with? Benny Jooks. Okay. Yeah. 
Likes to work snug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so do I, but, yeah. So you came out of that match uh, feeling decent about feeling it? Feeling good, yeah. Wrestling's been really weird for me in that I'll have a string of, like, 10, 11, 15 really good matches in a row, and then I'll have one that just sucks, and then I'll just sit there and think, man, I really fucking suck. <laughs> now I know what happened uh, at the most recent Chaotic show. Right he, he came yeah. off that string of good matches. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense now. <laughs> that was actually a good match. I like. I was match. happy with that match, yeah. We haven't had a bad match, I don't think. I don't think so either. I really like that one we had in uh, Rhode Island there, whatever the hell that was. Oh, so. yeah, the one we just called on the fly? Yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, fun. That was, that was really fun. fun. We got Avery involved. <laughs> so, yeah, speaking of Chaotic Wrestling, how did, I mean, obviously the school is is linked even more now with uh, Chaotic Wrestling, but how did your debut with Chaotic Wrestling come about? So Brian really busted his ass to try and get me into Chaotic, and um, he would pitched me to everyone who would listen, and uh, that, that helped out a lot. But yeah. uh, my, my first uh, quote-unquote debut was um, – it was at the Night Under the Stars, if that's what it's called, uh, that big um, Lowell Spinner show. Okay, it was what? last year. So the one, the one before, the one got canceled. The, the one that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually okay. great. Um, I did um, a battle royal. I was Mike Honcho at the time. <laughs> You're what? Did, you, did you spread your butt cheeks? <laughs> <laughs> What's Mike Honcho? <laughs> He spread his butt cheeks as Mike Honcho. <laughs> I don't understand. What's the joke? It's a Talladega Nights reference. Yes. Oh, I see. All right. <laughs> Mike doesn't like Will Ferrell Some or funny movies. Those. Yeah, it stinks. Mike doesn't like anything that anybody else likes. Oh, my God. What's your, <laughs> what's your favorite movie? Uh, Back to the Future. Uh, it's all right. Were oh. you alive for it? Well, no, he's, he's, I don't think so. He's going to cut, cut you off on this podcast. <laughs> that's how you're done. Whoa, that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> so uh, Chaotic Wrestling, like, how did that differ from the UFO show? Oh, the year was, before. I think it was like two thousand people in the crowd at that time. Oh for, yeah, yeah. For that big spinner show, but it was it was much more professional. There was a script, um, locker room meeting, um, a Tron. Names were in the locker room. Well ran organization. It's still one of the best ran organizations, if not the best organization that I've worked for in my career so far. You think it's impressive now? You should have seen it when me and Crockett were running oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> you talked earlier about your T-shirt and stuff like that, and marketing yourself. D- didn't you take marketing in college? Yeah, that's what um, that's what I got my degree in. Okay, so it, was that with wrestling in mind? Yes, um, I had no idea what I wanted to do, so I was just taking all my uh, prerequisite classes and everything like that. And um, I figured if I really wanted to be a pro wrestler. Let's go all in. I took so many public speaking classes because I was dreadful at public speaking. I, I, I'd have to like read ahead in books and memorize what was going on before I read in class. So I took a bunch of public speaking classes and a bunch of marketing classes knowing that I would have to market myself as an independent wrestler. And I took a lot of uh, TV production classes and uh, stuff, stuff of that nature just to be able to fall back on something. If wrestling didn't work out, I can maybe produce wrestling of some sort. So you think that, I mean, obviously it, it helped you with like social media and stuff yeah, like that. Get yeah. yourself out there. Yeah. There's a lot of people who don't know how to do that that well. And Hello. You're looking at two of them right here. <laughs> Hands up. <laughs> it really, especially being really young and new, it, it helped me a lot. I think that's one of the things that uh, allowed me to boost my popularity if, if, if there is popularity a little bit. So you're saying I shouldn't be publicly attacking people over the New England <laughs> <Exactly>. Patriots <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm looking to maximize you're my do social it. media. You're, you're in a whole different ball game, man. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> you're a of honor TV star, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, at least somebody in the room uh, <laughs> recognizes that, Michael. No wonder you're so agreeable to this interview. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Uh, yeah, we could use, maybe we'll bring him on as a uh, social media manager. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> you got nothing else to do, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm free. <laughs> free. Uh, so Chaotic Wrestling came about, how did Beyond Wrestling come about, which is you know a, a big promotion, this area across the country now with YouTube? Yeah. That was one of my big goals when I got into wrestling was get into Beyond and get into Limitless. And um, everyone. <laughs> Limitless has been around for like, what, a couple of couple yeah, years? Yeah, and- <laughs> a cup of coffee. <laughs> how you, so how old are you? I'm sorry. I'm 24 years old. Okay. Are you really? Yeah, you didn't know that? No, I thought you were, I thought you were like close to 30. No, 24, man. Good God. 1993. Yeah. Screw you. 
<laughs> and so you've been doing, life ahead of me. You've been doing this for two years, three uh, years? Yeah, two years. And uh, we're we going to talk almost. about that post I saw on New Year's then, man. You're 24. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's That's engaged to be married. Engaged, man. Oh, I'm 24 see. and engaged. Oh, congratulations. I love, I love her to death. She's the best no, I'm thing ever happened to me. Time. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Uh, Beyond Wrestling and Limitless were your, two of your yeah, goals. Yeah, those are my two goals. And a bunch of people that um, worked for Beyond, Dijak included, were really pushing to get me into Beyond, uh, talking to Drew Cordero. And they built up a lot of hype for me. And um, the cards aligned where I had a free Saturday off. And uh, Drew was running a TV taping here. Or uh, a secret, secret show, show whatever, whatever is, yeah. yeah, whatever they're called. And um, I showed up, and me and uh, Maxwell Jacob Friedman had a match. It was an awesome match, and I think Drew fell in love with me at that point, and just started giving me beyond dates. And we talked, we talked to MJF about that match, and I I'd say, I'd, I remember saying to you two guys, like to guys at your experience level shouldn't be able to have a match like that. And he and he said when I walked away, he looked at you and thought I was like. Ribbing you guys or like rip, you know, oh, yeah, giving yeah. you guys well, shit. He's like such a <laughs> such a paranoid kid that he thinks that everyone's out to get him or like he, he doesn't take anyone at like their. <laughs> yeah, I literally said, man, you guys are great. That guys, your your experience level shouldn't be able to wrestle like that. Yeah. That's a, and, and I laughed when he told me that he was like, he thought I was just like ripping on him. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, uh, what was your first Beyond Wrestling show in front of a, a crowd? The uh, most recent American Rana. Okay. I had a, a like a forty five second match against Cam Zagami. That's how it should be, right, yeah. Brian? <laughs> he, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be managing Cam Zagami oh, coming up. Man. There you go. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll do it again. He um <laughs> he called everyone in the in the crowd a child molester or something of the sort. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And um, my music played. I came out, hit him with my deal, and uh, that was that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. He's like he's like Josh Briggs, like the king of the open challenges in uh, Beyond Wrestling. I was, yeah. I I think I answered like eight open challenges to the point where like they just know who was going to come out every single time, like a nine one one kind of thing from ECW. <laughs> yeah, and and you won all. You I won, beat I won, them all. Yeah, right? I won everyone. Yeah. There you go. That's how it should be. So Beyond Wrestling. What about I saw a um, a match between you and one Jack Swagger. Oh. I like that match a lot. For NEW, New, uh, Northeast Wrestling. That's a No, I mean, it wasn't Northeast Wrestling. Was it wasn't? No, it was it was in Connecticut, but it was uh, Wrestle Jam. Oh, okay. Uh, pardon Get your me. Facts straight. Holy Toledo, let me delete this right now. <laughs> uh so uh, so how did you uh, feel about that was your first match against a a uh, yeah, star? former WWE guy. Yeah. yeah. How did you feel about that going in? I mean, you're two years in um i really liked it a lot um i called all of it really yeah every single thing i knew everything he did because i'm a little mark and i watch wrestling <laughs> and um i called the match he loved it I, I let him in the match called everything in there for him and uh, is it something that he said what do you want to do or are you just kind of we can talk about that like on a commercial break as to, <laughs> as to why. Um, I, I, I have I have a feeling. I have a feeling that I, yeah. <laughs> idea. <laughs> I was really proud of that match. Uh, proud of how everything turned out, how how it all went about, and how I adapted to the situations that I was put into. And uh, it was a really good match. I thought. So you did work for NEW. Oh I? yes, I I do work for NEW. They okay. they treat me very well. Yeah, and that's one of the. I mean, you talked about working in front of two thousand people for Chaotic. NEW does huge venues, like huge high school gyms, yep. uh, baseball. In area, yeah, in this area, nobody does it better than than NEW when it comes to those big, yeah. those big outdoor stadium shows. You that know. had to be a big goal as well. Like it how, was a really big goal. How did that partnership come about? I uh, did another rumble for them and uh, met Mike Lombardi, and he he really liked me, like my size, like my look, and everything like that. And uh, once uh, the old other big tall asshole left, um, <laughs> uh, there was a spot to be filled. And um, I don't know if he had a few words to say on his way out or what, but um, I, it was my time to take over, and uh, I just capitalized on the situation. I had really good matches with whoever they put me in there with. So that tall asshole who left you said uh, <laughs> brian said that you weren't really around at the same time a lot because he's doing the ring of honor stuff and all this other stuff but you did have an opportunity to have a match or two with him correct yes. oh, yeah i was talking more about like just 
training at right. the school. Okay, yeah. 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 Um, that was probably my favorite match of 2017 was me and Die Jack at Limitless. That was very special for me because I looked up to him and um, I wanted to emulate my career based off of him we had a few road trips and we'd have heart to hearts and talk and he went to umass as well i don't know if you knew that or not yeah and um we both hated football and he had a bad experience there with football too yeah, I think. so that was like our original bonding point and um i remember him cutting a promo after the match and i don't think he could think of anything nice to say so he's like we played at umass together and we both didn't like football <laughs> <laughs> well, that was funny but uh it was, it was really good that was a, it was a great match and that was another one of those points where i just i learned so much and i think that match boosted me to another level being in there with someone that's so much better than you uh you can pick up on everything they uh they put down if you're really perceptive it was a really good confidence booster that I could hang with him and that my ideas that I did give to him for the match, um, he was really receptive to and took them. And uh, it was just it was awesome. And then we had another one at Chaotic, me and him and Christian for the New England Championship. I don't see a lot of th uh, triple threat matches that are as good as that. I really liked that match a lot and uh, it had everything to offer. You talked about him uh, mentioning the football stuff, and he really, I mean, I don't think you could put someone over more when he was talking on the microphone after the match, just putting you over and saying you're like the next, yeah. you're the next guy. How did that make you feel? At Limitless, it was, I, I got choked up a little bit. It was cool yeah. because uh, for someone that I think, I legitimately think Donovan Dijak's one of the top 10 best wrestlers on the planet. And um, for someone of his caliber to say that to me, and about me, uh, that that meant a lot. And uh, he did so much for me in that match and uh, put me over in the match and afterwards. Um, it's kind of like he, he took his pop and just put it into me and told them, cheer for this guy now and forget about me. That that was uh, surreal. She shouldn't have done that, and he did, and I really appreciate that. And you kind of gave the pop to Diajack, didn't you, before you left Chaotix? <laughs> I guess, so I guess. he passed it on. I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Started with you. There yeah. you go. Yeah, there you go. I mentioned you're the Chaotic Wrestling New England champion. Is that your first championship? Um, I was, uh, yeah, slowly roll. Oh, pardon I me. was <laughs> one half of the UFO Tag Team Champions, sir. My goodness. <laughs> Who was your partner? Bo Douglas. Wow, all right. Well, former alum of the wrestling podcast, one nothing. Yes, very prestigious. <laughs> you would know, being the UFO champion for the fifth year now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm the greatest of all time. I think that goes without question. Out of this world, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that was my first singles title. Okay, th th thank you. So, I mean, does that give you any feeling? I know it's you know it's wrestling. It's you know it's a work, but does that mean anything to you? Um, it, it's really cool. It's a good looking title. And Chaotic's really special to me, and it's my home. So um, when, when I got that title, I didn't really uh, have that like that moment you see on WWE where people cry and whatnot. It was just, all right, it's my time to step up and do my job. And uh, I really wanted to make that title be the title that everyone wants to go see uh, around New England. It's the New England Championship, and I want it to be like the championship in New England. So um, my goal was to go out there, bust my ass, and do whatever I could to make that championship match the best match on the card every night. Sadly, you got stuck with this guy, though. So, so, so schlub. <laughs> <Such a schlub. clears throat> yeah, piece of shit left. Hung me out to dry. Walked to the back, and I got my ass kicked. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Brick beat the hell out yeah, of me. Yeah, beat the oh, hell out of me. Oh, yes. And this asshole is nowhere to be found. I was kissing babies and <laughs> hanging out with rats and whatnot. <laughs> Making towns, brother. <laughs> so, uh, what are your future aspirations in this biz? Oh, my God. Um, well, I mean, I think you probably achieved one big goal today, I would assume. Yeah, is... I, I really actually did want to do this podcast. <laughs> well, thank you. He did answer very quickly when I texted him. So, um, I want to be the best independent wrestler on the planet. I want to go to japan i want to get signed to ring of honor i want to get signed somewhere in japan um i just want to be as popular as i can be and uh i think i'm kind of on the way to all of those goals in a roundabout way have you done a lot of traveling uh yeah i'm trying my best i'm going down to new orleans for wrestlemania weekend i've a regular up in canada for alpha one wrestling and c4 
there was a time where I'd drive to, drive to Jersey, like a seven-hour drive every single week. Um, I want to get down to the south and um, down to the west coast and whatnot, but um, yeah. You're real big on that uh, headlock tackle, get it again? Yes. <laughs> right? Bring that to the yeah. south? <laughs> Don't got to do anything down there. Man. Have you ever... Um like gone to WWE TV or anything like that? Uh, Ring of Honor TV, that's it. Okay. I, I never really. I, I was always told not to do that, and um, I get mixed opinions about whether or not to do it. And uh, it's 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 a it's a net zero. Yeah, it, it doesn't hurt you. Doesn't doesn't help you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean if that's that's my that's my honest opinion of it. Anybody who who's telling you not to do it, like because oh that's all. Oh, look at you. That's yeah. Uh, no, that's not that's wrong. But same thing like there's only been like one guy ever that we've ever known that got signed off of going to tv that was antonio thomas so it's i think it's a net zero it's an experience to be there but it's not going to make or break your career either way (laughs) when nxt first came up to lowell i had a interview with matt bloom or a meeting i guess with matt bloom to see if he gave a shit about me or whatnot and i was dressed up in my suit and everything and i just sat there with my thumb up my ass the whole time a, <laughs> that's that's very similar to experiences at tv it was just such a such an uncomfortable experience as to oh shit do i shake this guy's hand he has a food in his hand i don't want to be an asshole uh, and it's just it's such a stressful yeah situation of, like, i don't want someone to hit me and then you, you find out like half the people in wrestling hate the handshake thing anyways so you know it's it's all it's all such a weird thing. it's all hugs they yeah. love hugs up there now right oh, this guy loves the Kisses handshakes the so this fucking guy, crockett uh he tried to bury me on this podcast because uh, several times i'm like well when you go to ring of honor you must go around shake everybody's hands like i shake people's hands i see them but i don't like do like the lap around the building to find every yeah. person who might possibly be in the building to shake their hand and he was like appalled by this yeah, you gotta make sure you uh, glad hand full of people, kiss the babies like you're no, saying. Guys like me and Briggs let our talent do the talking. Oh, I, I just if if you get mad at me because I accidentally miss you in a handshake or you're talking and I don't want to interrupt you or you have food or something and I don't shake your hand, I just hate your guts. Chances are he doesn't like. Me. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Brian, he put you over big time. Why don't you put him over to close this thing yes, out? Yes, please do that. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I, I I think very highly of this guy. I think he's got a. I think the kid's got a bright future. I knew from the first time I laid eyes <laughs> on him. <laughs> he taught me everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> I taught him everything he knows. I take him under my wing. You know. Yeah. You know, you know the best thing I like about your big is you're a good dude. You're a humble dude. You work your ass off. You genuinely care about it. Uh, you know what came before you. You know where you want to go. You know how to achieve it, or you know how you want to achieve it. That's most guys don't do that. So that's what's going to always separate you from from everybody else. I always say the smartest guy I ever met in wrestling so far, and I've uh, that I've encountered is Biff Busick, yeah. um, just because of of the way he operated. But I don't think you're that far. <laughs> I don't think you're that far behind him. And um, yeah, I have no doubt you're going to get where you where you want to go. And just, just it's that, that old like it's a, it's, a, it's a lazy feedback. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep trying to get better and being smart about it. And maybe you join me up at the show at Ring of Honor someday, kid. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> God, there's people listen to this and not know my sense of humor. And like, listen, to this, well, this guy's a cocky ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Continued success with everything that's going on, and uh, I'm sure people will continue to see you out there more and more. And uh, like Brian said, I'm sure everything that's uh, coming your way is going to come your way. Thanks, Crockett. <laughs> Thank you, sir.